where do you go when you have a question that you don't know the answer to? Well, if you're like most of us, you Google it. In fact, Google is answering our questions at a rate of about 40,000 every second. That's 3.5 billion today. We turn to Google during some of our most curious, impressionable, and desperate moments. Just ask anybody who's Googled their own symptoms. <laughs> we ask Google questions about sex, money, politics, foot fungus, and how to French kiss. Hopefully those last two not at the same time. <laughs> but have you ever stopped to think how it's a little bit scary that so many of us are going to the same place to get our information? Well, you might think it's a little scarier when I tell you that the answers you're getting from Google are being manipulated. Now, how do I know that? Because for nearly five years, I was one of the people being paid to do the manipulating. In fact, if you bought a house or hired a plumber over the past half decade in this city, chances are good you saw or maybe hired one of my old clients. But I never set out to be a manipulator. In fact, until manipulating search engines was my job, I didn't even know it was possible. And when I learned it was, I was both really excited and a little bit horrified because now I faced a dilemma. What kind of information would I be responsible for helping to put in front of people? See, what I learned is that search results have the power to do more than just stop that guy from using too much tongue. They can change your opinions, and your opinions shape your actions, and your actions shape our world. Now, some of you are sitting there and thinking, please, you think I'm going to change my mind because of something I read on the internet? I'm too smart to be manipulated. But studies are showing you're wrong. <laughs> A study by Eric Wharton and Steve Burnett found that they could influence the opinions of well-educated college students on everything from GMOs to Iran's nuclear program just by changing the search results that those students could interact with. And could search results be used to sway an election? Well, psychologist Robert Epstein and his research team found that they could shift the vote of 1,800 undecided Indian voters by an average of 12.5%. And only 1% of those voters could tell they were being manipulated. But even your afterlife could be at stake here, people. I mean, the Mormon church undertook a massive campaign to be the first church you find when you go looking for Jesus. Literally. So, now that you've seen all of this is possible, what are you supposed to do about it? And the answer comes by asking a simple question. Who is the best looking man in the world? I'm serious. Now you might think the answer is subjective. He might say Ryan Gosling, she might say Brad Pitt, and you, well, you must think it's your husband, right? But if you were to pull out your phone and ask Google, who is the best looking man in the world, you might be surprised to learn that, ladies and gentlemen, standing before you on the stage today is the best looking man in the world. But I didn't do that because I want to get in your pants. I did that because it was the easiest way I could think of to get in your heads the idea that while Google is fantastic at organizing information, they are miserable at discerning the truth. See, Google needs us for that. So while this might feel like a big, scary system that you're outside of, you're actually at the heart of it. Because if I can become the best looking man in the world with about $15 a year and eight hours of my time, we can use the web to influence more important perceptions for the positive. And if you're skeptical, just know that we've seen people do it before. When Romanians faced an ugly PR problem, they banded together to change the things Google suggested when you started to search Romanians are, from ugly and stupid to beautiful and smart. Filipinos faced a similar problem, so they rallied together to push down results for the sex trade and mail-order brides and take back their online identity. And in one of the most well-recognized, memorable Google bombs ever, a group of outspoken voters used the web to tell the White House exactly how they thought the president was doing. <laughs> so, the natural question now is how? How can you get involved 
in using the web to change perceptions for the positive. And I'm not going to stand here and pretend that search engines aren't incredibly complicated. They are. But the honest truth is that the two most important parts of the process are things any one of us can do. First, you need to give truth a platform. And that means starting or contributing to a website. Now, if that intimidates you, know that the barrier to entry has never been lower. You can get a site up and running in less than 15 minutes without knowing a single line of code. But second, and maybe more importantly, it means rallying a group of people together and getting them clicking on, sharing, and especially linking to your idea. You see, none of the examples that I shared earlier would have been possible without the work of a team. Google uses the things we do online to help determine what should show up where, the things we look at, click on, and link to. And when a group makes a mindful effort, that impact is compounded. So here's my challenge for you today. You've seen that this is happening. Will you decide to stop being a passive consumer of information and to take up the role of an active contributor of truth? Because remember, while this might seem like a big, scary system that you're outside of, you're actually at the heart of it. And together, we can be the change we want to see on the web. <laughs> Thank you guys so much.